Hello and welcome to everyone here. It's lovely to see you at this time of year. I'm sure there's no doubt that you know the reason for our celebrations at this special season. It's not about presents or parties or fun or family games when all said and done. They do have some value, they all have their worth, but none is as special as Jesus' birth. So we have a story that we'd like to tell, the Good News Nativity, you'll know it well. It starts long ago in a faraway place, when Emperor Caesar ruled without grace. He sent out a message, announced it to all, so here is the soldier who hollered the call. Hear ye, hear ye, listen to me. Caesar Augustus has made a decree. All of you people, that's everyone here, and all of the empire far and near, must go to be registered where they were born. So all of you, get packed and set off at dawn. So as you will know from this story of old, Mary and Joseph did as they were told. They traveled to Bethlehem, they traveled far, and it was exhausting as they had no car. So when they arrived there, well, Joseph's main quest was simply to find somewhere Mary could rest. Hello, is anyone there? We need a room. Do you have a spare? Hello, is anyone there? We need a room. Do you have a spare? We're busy. Can't help you. So please go away. We just don't have time for you today. Hello, is anyone there? We need a room. Do you have a spare? I'm sorry, I'd like to invite you both in, but as you can see, no room, no room at the inn. I do have a stable, that seems strange to say. I know it's not where you would choose to stay. You're welcome to use it, that is up to you. We're desperate, so even our stable will do. Okay now then Mary, let's get some, some rest, I know. It's not great, but I have done my best. And that's where we're starting our story today. I know you'll enjoy our nativity play. Just put your feet up, settle down, have a rest. The news is what Bethlehem Daily do best. The programme is ready. Please take it away. You're watching the Good News Nativity Play. I'm Christopher Bailey. Starting today, there's news just in. The birth of a baby who's born to be king. That's right. We have witnesses with lots to say about this young baby asleep in the hay. So hot off the press, we'll be bringing the news. This magical tale of the king of the Jews. But first, though, some shepherds who claim to have seen a vision that most would assume was a dream. A visit from angels in all of their glory to our correspondent. Hello, I've a story. Yes, hello and welcome. I'm joined here today by delirious shepherds with a lot to say. So please, can you tell me, why are you so scared? What happened here as you were watching your herd? We were out on the hillside, just watching our sheep. Correction, we all were, but she was asleep. When high in the sky came a brilliant light, it lit up the sky in the dead of the night. Amazing! 
What happened next? What was the light? And what made it shine so brilliantly bright? Well, listen, I'll tell you. You will not believe what happened to us on that magical eve. At first, we were frightened, afraid for the sheep. Again, how would you know when you were asleep? Ha oh, ha, oh, very funny. It wasn't a joke. The light was an angel, and the angel spoke. Yes, we've recreated the scene that occurred. So viewers, this is what they claim to have heard. Behold, I come from Abraham's birth. Saviour born, Lord of the earth. You find him in Bethlehem. A major in rest in his head. He's wrapped up all cosy in the hay. It seems quite remarkable. What happened next? Well, as you'd imagine, we all were perplexed. Then as we listened and back, and bowed foot to the ground. A whole host of angels gathered around. We lifted our eyes and we watched them amazed as each of them danced and they sang and they praised. So what are your plans now you've heard what they say? Well, we plan to search for this babe in the hay. Hey, maybe you'd like to come travelling too. And stay with the story. Yes, that's what I'll do. Well, thank you the shepherds for telling your story. So back now to you again, Sarah Minori. More later from Ivor. The shepherds have gone with our correspondent tagging along. But now we've a musical interlude to the latest sensation, especially for you. For we have a treat next. So, what can I say? Over to you. Please take it away. Ready? Yeah. One, two, two three. three. We wish we you a Merry Christmas. Christmas. We, we wish you a Merry Christmas. Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Wonderful. That was great. Really, thank you. Now we have another great story next too. I think that our budget has vastly increased. But this story is coming from far in the east. Yes, our correspondent is there on the scene. So let's find out more now from Josephine Dean. Hi Christopher, thank you. Here at the hotel, three kings from the east have a story to tell. They all know their scriptures and say they have seen a star in the east. Tell me, what does it mean? Well, if you look, then you can see way up high. That brightest of stars over there in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how bright, wonder where you are. Up above a blue sky, how I wonder you like. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. We've seen it and followed it. Here's the good news. It tells of the birth of the king of the Jews. So we plan to follow it, journeying far. For we will not rest until that brightest star has led us to where we can worship this King, the Lord and the Ruler of everything. You heard it here first. What incredible news! The birth of a baby, the King of the Jews. So thank you. I'll leave you and go and explore. I'll keep you updated as I find out more. Yes, Josephine will be back later with more. Did you see those kings and the robes they wore? That was an extravagant interviewee. This king of the Jews, how rich must he be? 
Now, travel news and all the business news too. I hear traffic's bad on the roads. Is that true? Yes, probably. Thanks to the Emperor of Rome, everyone seems to be travelling home. But if you've not heard about Caesar's decree, then listen up now and you'll hear it from me. For most of the people are rushing ahead to get to their hometown, for Caesar has said that he has a register for us to sign. But in our hometown, and this, thankful, is mine. And business news? Anything new to report? Well, yes, but there's not much, so this will be short. The markets are down when a recession sets in. With taxes impending, we're cutting spending. But shares in some business have soared overnight. It seems that the donkey sales reached quite a height. And hotels and innkeepers can't keep abreast of all the demand for good places to rest. So right now, if you're looking where to invest, my tip, local travel industry's best. Uh, can I interrupt please? We're, we're keeping this short um, and we still have the weather we need to report. Yes. Now, on to the weather. And last but not least, there's a strange phenomenon that is coming in from the east. Bethlehem's perfect conditions is making this a very special starry night. So, telescopes out wherever you are and make sure you keep a lookout for Bethlehem's brightest new star. Oh, I'm sorry to cut in, but news is just in that Ivor's main story is developing. So back now to Ivor. So, where are you now and have you discovered this saviour somehow? I'm in Bethlehem where the angel has said, the saviour will be in a manger bed. I'm letting the shepherds walk on just ahead. We've heard there's a baby in the cattle shed. Hello, I am sorry, but do I know you? We're looking for someone. You won't believe who. We'll not tell you how, but we recently heard that something incredible has just occurred. A saviour is born to the world, so may we just check the manger. Will you let us say we've travelled for ages, we've left all our shoes. Silence night, holy night, voice come, voice right, round yon virgin, mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild, sweet sent us. It's clear in my mind that yours is the baby she sent us to find. 
She says he's the saviour of all the earth, so we've come to celebrate your baby's birth. Amazing! I saw it with my own two eyes. I have to confess that it was a surprise. The scene was exactly as the angels said. The baby was laid in a manger bed and wrapped up in nothing but swaddling bands. Right here in the humblest of Judah's lands. It's nothing spectacular, modest at best. Now let's leave the mother and baby to rest. I've been Ivor Story for Bethlehem Daily. Now back to the studio, Christopher Bailey. Well, make of that story whatever you will, but we have a prophecy now to fulfil. Remember the kings from the east? We have news. It seems that they're close to the king of the Jews. If he's as important as these kings suggest, his place of birth must be the best of the best. So get ready, viewers. You're likely to see the biggest and best palace there'll ever be. So, over to our correspondent, who is at the place of this king of the Jews, Habit. Yes, hello there, Christopher. Strange as it seems, I'm not in the city of everyone's dreams. And viewers, I have to make one thing quite clear. You won't find a palace or golden crib here. For I'm here in Bethlehem, stable in sight, yes. Stable, not palace. You did hear me right. The kings, they are knocking on the stable door. I've never seen anything so strange before. Well, more of that story right after the break. Will they find the King of the Jews? I can't wait. The God of Humility The King of Kings who came to earth and chose a stable for his birth. Not a palace fine and grand, I can't pretend to understand. He could have chosen precious things like those delivered by the kings. He could have been an earthly prince, the ruler of a large province. But no, he chose a virgin's birth in the humblest place on earth. No gold encrusted prince's bed, just a feeding trough instead. No warm embrace, no welcome stay, the innkeeper sent him away. And when God first announced his birth, did he choose status, wealth or worth? Who did the angels come to tell? By now you'll know this story well. The only people told firsthand were shepherds. Who can understand God's choices and his complex ways? He's, he never ceases to amaze. When Jesus came to Bethlehem, he came the Son of God and men. He learned our ways, he lived our life, he suffered earthly pain and strife. But best of all, he came to save and saw this through and to his grave. No violence, no worry, no self-importance barrier. Just humble grace from start to end. Lord, help us please to comprehend. Give us your humble grace, we pray. Your gift to us this Christmas day. Have you just tuned in? This is Bethlehem Daily. I'm Sarah Minori. I'm Christopher Bailey. Before the break, we heard some intriguing news that Bethlehem's home to the King of the Jews. To find out the details, here's Josephine Dean, our news correspondent, who's there at the scene. Yes, hello there, Sarah. Well, as you can see, I'm honoured with royalty here with me. They followed a star and it's brought them here. They say that the King of the Jews must be near.
Hello, can I help you? Yes, can we come in? We come here to worship the King of all Kings. For years we have travelled. Yes, we've travelled far. We followed the journey mapped out by that star. The scriptures have guided us. They made it clear. The king that we're looking for, he is right here. Come in, you are welcome. It's true what you say. That is God's own son laid in the hay. My Lord, we bring gifts where we will present them to you. Each one is symbolic of what you will do. Oh Lord, you've abandoned the finest of things, but I bring you gold, Lord, the King of all kings. Your priestly role, no doubt, will be bittersweet. I bring frankincense and I kneel at your feet. And I bring you myrrh and I bow down to you in praise and thanksgiving for what you will do. You heard it here first, viewers. Never before have kings humbly bowed to another in awe. Now back to the studio. Over to you. Wow, Joe, that's amazing. Hmm. Could it be true? Well, I'm sorry, everyone. That's all for now. I don't think that story has ended somehow. I'm sure we'll hear more of the King of the Jews, so keep tuning in to hear more good news. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Bethlehem Daily. From Sarah Minori and Christopher Bailey. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Merry Christmas from 72nd Rotherham Brownies. Happy Christmas everybody and a very Happy New Year to you. Happy Christmas everybody, God bless. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas to everybody! Happy Christmas St John's and have a wonderful New Year! Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year! Merry Christmas everyone at St John's and a happy and prosperous New Year! Happy New Year, St John's. Missing you all lots. Wishing all at St John's a very happy Christmas. And a peaceful New Year. We, we wish you a very happy Christmas and, and a happy, happy and healthy New Year. New year. The whole world has a Merry Christmas. Christmas. Happy <laughs> Christmas, everyone, and a happy and safe New Year. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas everybody, and, and a happy, happy New Year. year.
I wish a happy Christmas to St John's and to everybody who comes and I hope we have a lovely Christmas time this year. We wish you all a really happy Christmas and a joyful and peaceful New Year. God bless. Happy Christmas everybody. Wishing everyone at St John's a happy, peaceful Christmas. Many blessings to you all. Amen. Hello everybody. We'd like to take this opportunity to wish you all a very, very Merry Christmas. And we hope to see you soon on behalf of the Rainbows, the Brownies and the Guides. Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. And a happy and healthy 2021. Bye everybody. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I just a quick message to wish you a Merry Christmas, but most of all, just thank you for all your support, what you've done throughout this year. I look forward to working with you again next year. Let's hope 2021 it's going to be a lot better year. Merry Christmas, everybody. I'll see you next year. Bye. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Good news! She said yes. We got engaged on Joe's birthday.